there, I'm Sheer, your AEC Tech Girl, and welcome back to my channel. Today we're diving into the latest innovations in Revit 2025. To ensure we cover everything comprehensively, I've organized today's episode into several categories. I'll be going over just the common improvements, so if you enjoy this video, remember to comment down below if you want to see specific improvements tailored for architecture, systems, or structure. All right then, grab your coffee, settle in, and let's uncover what's new in Revit 2025. Like I mentioned, I've done the heavy lifting for you, categorizing all the enhancements and thrilling updates. Here's a sneak peek of what's in store. First, we'll go over the family enhancements, then annotation improvements, UI enhancements, some of the new functionality to the project browser for view and sheet management, performance and graphic enhancements, material library improvements, IFC improvements, and lastly, and it wouldn't be my video without these, the Dynamo update. Stay tuned as we dive deeper into each category as I demonstrate these upgrades in action comparing the 2024 version to the 2025 Revit version. Let's kick things off by exploring the family enhancements. We will start by looking at both radial and linear arrays within families. While the improvements are the same for both, let's focus on the radial array first. In Revit 2024, one limitation was that you couldn't set the array to be less than two. This meant that setting it to one or zero would result in an error. To achieve this, you sometimes had to resort to some workarounds involving formulas or visibility parameter, and it was kind of a headache. But guess what? In Revit 2025, that limitation is a thing of the past. Now you can easily set the array to be one or zero without any errors. And notice how the elements that are no longer visible in the array are displayed in halftone for better clarity. Now let's take a quick look at the linear array. The same enhancements apply here as well, just like in the radial array. I can set the value to be one or zero in the linear array, and the visibility options remain consistent. With the enhancements to both radial and linear arrays, you can now set the number of instances to be less than two, saving you valuable time. There are two improvements in Revit's automatic room perimeter calculations. In previous Revit versions, inner loop boundaries were not included in the room perimeter calculations, and circular room perimeter calculations weren't really correct. You can see here in Revit 2024 that the perimeter is the same regardless if I have an inner loop or not. You can also see the incorrect value for a circular room. Below, I do have the perimeter calculated by hand, and you can see the difference there. In Revit 2025, both of these have been corrected, and now the inner loop is calculated for the perimeter, as you can see here, and the value is also correct for circular rooms. The last improvement under the family enhancement is the disable mark number auto generation for MEP categories. In earlier versions of Revit, the mark value for various MEP categories was automatically generated, which wasn't always needed and could cause some performance issues. Now in 2025, the mark value is no longer automatically generated for the following categories, which will improve the performance. For MEP ancillary framing, MEP fabrication ductwork stiffeners, air terminals, mechanical equipment, electrical fixtures, mechanical control devices, lighting fixtures, pipe accessories, sprinklers, and plumbing equipment. Let's move on to our annotation improvement. There's only one, but this new feature is a highly requested improvement that I know I have been waiting a long time to see, which is alignment for text, tag, and keynotes. Now you can select either tags, text notes, or keynotes and align with the various alignment options or even select all three types at once. The alignment options are top, bottom, center, middle, left, right, distribute horizontal, and distribute vertical. This is going to make cleaning up your details so much easier. 
Okay, let's now talk about the macro manager. In Revit 2024, we can see the UI of the macro manager here. And when either creating a new macro or editing an existing macro, it opened up in Sharp Develop. In Revit 2025, we can see the sleeker and simpler UI for the macro manager. And now it uses Visual Studio Code as a, you know, more modern editor. Before you are able to create new macros, I want to let you know that you do need to download and install both Visual Studio Code and .NET SDK 8.0 if you haven't done so already. You will then need to restart Revit before you can begin adding or editing macros. You might also notice that there is no longer support for document level macros, Python, or VB.NET macros. You can only create C Sharp macros by default. Also, macros created in previous versions will not work in 2025 because of the new .NET framework. For those that don't know, Revit 2025 upgraded to a .NET 8 framework. The last UI update is to apply area rules. The function was moved to the ribbon as a toggle button. Previously, it was in the modify bar as a checkbox. Now, it's in the modify ribbon as a button. All right, that covers the UI improvement. Let's move on to the new functionality to the project browser for sheet and view management. I am super excited for these improvements. The first is for creating a sheet collection. If you don't know what a sheet collection is, it's basically kind of a new way to organize your sheets in your project browser. You can add a new sheet collection to your sheet organization by right clicking on the sheets parent in the project browser. Now I can add a sheet collection and customize the name with the same ways that I would rename a sheet. I can double click to rename or right click and rename. To add sheets to a sheet collection, I can select one or multiple sheets at a time in the project browser. And if I go to the properties tab, I can see a new parameter called sheet collection and update the parameter to the sheet collection I created. Or alternatively, I can simply drag and drop the sheets in the project browser like so. Sheet collection is great and can also be added to schedule so you can use them to filter your sheet schedules. All right, let's create another sheet collection so I can show you the next incredible improvement. You can now have the same sheet number for multiple sheets. In 2024, you can see that if I try to use the same sheet number, I will get a warning and won't be able to. Now in 2025, you can have sheets with the same sheet number. You will, however, notice that if I try to create a sheet with the same sheet number, I will get a warning that they must be in different sheet collections. This is why we first created those sheet collections. But now that I have those sheet collections, I can simply move the sheet to a different sheet collection and then have the sheets with the same number in the same project. I can't tell you how many times people have asked me if they can have the same sheet number in a project and finally I can tell them yes. For the performance and graphics enhancements, there is really only one that is worth showing, and that is the background PDF export. Now, when you export a PDF, you have an option to check on export in background. This wasn't available in Revit 2024. Now, when you export in 2025 to PDF, it will work in background and you can actually check its status by going down to the bottom right of your bar and seeing it under the background processes. Now, that it will export the sheets or views as they were when you exported them. Since you can continue to work after exporting on your project, you may make changes to those views or sheets, but those changes won't appear in the PDF. The other improvements are related to vector quality, Revit Modern Graphics, and extensible storage schema. All right, let's talk material library improvements. There were two improvements to the material browser, which include faster appearance previews and the ability to batch delete materials from the model or batch add materials to your library. In Revit 2024, when you select on the appearance of the material, you only get two options under render settings, which is draft quality and production quality. Both options tend to take a bit of time to load. However, in 2025, when you select on render settings, there is now a third option, which is quick. Once you change it to quick, you can see how much faster it is to switch between materials without having to wait. When I change it back to draft quality, you can see the load time is affected when updating. 
Next is the ability to either batch delete or batch add materials. In 2024, you did not have the ability to use the shift or control key on your toolbar to select multiple materials at once. But in 2025, I can now hold down either the shift or control key on my keyboard to select multiple materials at once and then right click to either delete or add to library. This will be a game changer for working in the material browser. For IFC enhancements, we have the IFC exports. Revit now introduces category mapping. This option was not available in 2024. This is a new option in your IFC export settings where you can create export mapping templates. You can either use the default mapping templates or create your own, import other mapping templates and export them. You can then change the IFC class, predefined types, or add a user defined type. Last, but certainly not least, are the Dynamo updates. Dynamo 3.0.3 introduces package management in a single location, node search by category, and improved Revit sample graphs, plus some fun additional nodes. First, I want to talk about all the newly added nodes for working with linked models. This is really exciting. When you navigate in your library to Revit and then to Elements, you will see two new categories, Link Element and Link Instance. Let's start with Link Element. You have three nodes to execute an action, by rate bounce, get geometry, and get location. You also have three nodes for querying data, bounding box, link inverse transform, and link transform. Remember to hover over the nodes in the library to see more information about them. All right, now let's take a look at link instance. You have many nodes for executing an action. All elements at level, all elements of category, all elements of category and view, all elements of class, by name, by title, and element by ID. And there's only one for querying data, which is document. But wait, there is more. Under application, then document, there is get link instance. There is also a new element category for topo solids, specifically to create topo solids. There are five new nodes, and there is one new node for querying data of topo solids. I won't go over each one, but take time, have a look, and play around with all these new nodes in Dynamo for Revit 2025. Now, I know I said I will just cover the common updates, but my background is in architecture, so I also need to sneak in one little architectural update, and that is with the multi-loop mullions. In Revit 2024, you could only have one loop created inside a mullion, which is really limiting what you can do with, multi with mullion profiles. But now in 2025, you can have multiple loops within one profile. This opens up the possibilities to create more complex profiles and designs, and it's pretty exciting. And there you have it. That's a glimpse into the exciting new features coming your way in Revit 2025, from enhanced family editing to UI improvements and beyond. I only covered the common improvements with a small sneak in of one architectural improvement. So remember to comment down below if you want to see specific improvements tailored for architecture, systems, or structure. Have fun exploring all the new features and let me know which ones you're most excited about. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss an update. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next episode. Remember, stay empowered, stay inspired, and always challenge what is possible.